The Postal Service is the crown jewel of our federal government. It serves every household and business every day. It employs 630,000 brave individuals who live in every single congressional district. According to Pew Research, 91% of Americans have a favorable view of the Postal Service, leaps and bounds above that of any other federal entity. During the coronavirus pandemic, the Postal Service's value to this nation is greater than ever. The Postal Service is a formal component of our nation's national response framework, serving as a linchpin of our nation's response to the pandemic. A June 2020 Harris poll found that the Postal Service ranked as the single most essential company to Americans during the pandemic because it's a constant in our lives. It outranks companies that manufacture PPE and sanitizers in that respect. Starting now and going through November, the Postal Service will also play a critical, unprecedented, in the sense of expanded, role in our democracy, protecting the health of voters who cast their ballots by mail. We, we know postal workers can handle the volume of that election mail. The question is whether those at the helm are taking steps to hinder that capacity and slow it down in ways that hurt the prospects of a fair election but benefit one candidate's re-election campaign. It's essential that Postal Service leadership demonstrate nonpartisanship and not cronyism or favoritism. Leading the Postal Service, serving everyone in our country, and particularly during this pandemic, is a responsibility to bestow upon only the most qualified and honorable of leaders. It's a job for those who are ready and willing to listen to the millions of stakeholders, mail recipients, mailers, voters, unions, veterans, older Americans, Congress, and so many others, to connect the United States, as Benjamin Franklin foresaw, and serve as the thread that unites our society's many fabrics. Unfortunately, that's not what is happening. Instead, we have a board of governors who inserted a political ally of the president into the search process at the 11th hour, circumventing proper vetting and background checks. We have a crony at the helm of our nation's postal service, a man rife with conflicts of interest and potential violations of law even, we have a postmaster general who would benefit financially if the Postal Service contracts out its services and sprints toward privatization. He who would benefit financially and politically if mail-in ballots are delayed or undelivered. That, that would be unacceptable under any circumstance. It's catastrophic, however, during a global pandemic on the precipice of one of the most consequential national elections in our lifetimes. This hearing seeks to provide the public with an update on what we know about the background and qualifications of the Postmaster General selected by the Board of Governors. In fact, one might say that this is the homework that Board of Governors should have done but failed to do. Using pu publicly available resources We'll piece together the troubling past to Mr. DeJoy. We'll examine his actions related to campaign donations while he was at the helm of New Breed Logistics. We'll explore his continued investments in companies that benefit from contracts with the Postal Service, companies that would also benefit if USPS pursued the President's plan for privatization. We will discuss why these actions and those connections matter, and why they should have rendered him, in my view, ineligible for consideration for this position. Mr. DeJoy's first day of work was June 15th. Today marks the start of his 13th week of federal service, and yet his record is characterized by tumult, controversy, plummeting service, betrayal of customers in dire need of life-saving medicines and supplies. But the trucks are on time, albeit with the mail, often left behind. So there's that. We learned at our last hearing that Mr. DeJoy has known for weeks that his so-called operational changes that just so happen to coincide with 
the election starting, slowed down the mail by 10%. That's according to their own inside sources, as the chairwoman of this committee made public at our last hearing. For two weeks, he withheld from Congress and the public the data and analysis that demonstrated how his leadership undermined the actual mission of the Postal Service to deliver the mail. Days later, details of Mr. DeJoy's personal lack of ethics have come to light. He reportedly forged his own brother's signature to take greater control of his family's company. Mr. DeJoy reportedly and potentially illegally used the family company as a personal political action committee, coercing his staff, reportedly, to donate to preferred Republican candidates and then reimbursing those employees with bonuses and salary. If true, DeJoy's actions should have been of great concern to the Board of Governors and could be prosecuted for criminal activity. But we're not done. Over the weekend, the Postmaster General sent every home in America a mailer instructing all who seek to vote by mail to request a mail-in ballot, sending misinformation and confusing voters in nine states that automatically send out such ballots. This debacle could have been avoided if Mr. DeJoy had simply accepted the offers of state election officials to proofread that message before he sent it out. And today we see reports emerging that when Mr. DeJoy was the CEO of New Breed Logistics and contracting with the Postal Service, his company may have received as much as $53 million in overpayments for services rendered. The dossier released today by Ms. Lisa Graves, one of our witnesses, shows that Mr. DeJoy continues to hold investments, assets, or other interest in entities that benefit when the Postal Service contracts out its operations. Moreover, Mr. DeJoy improperly mixes his personal and political friendships with his nonpartisan position, ostensibly, as PMG. What should scare every American who believes that the Postal Service should not be an arm of any campaign is that Mr. DeJoy, in his official capacity, continues to conceal his secret coordination with Trump campaign associates, about which he's already provided misleading information and testimony before the Congress. The chairwoman and I have repeatedly asked the Postmaster General and the Board of Governors for information that would justify the sweeping operational changes, clarify what Mr. DeJoy's investments are, ensure transparency of operations, and restore trust in the Postal Service. They have not given the committee the documents we have requested and that we require. On September 2nd, Chairwoman Maloney issued a subpoena compelling Mr. DeJoy to produce a wide range of documents, including those previously requested and a list of contacts, all contacts, with Trump campaign affiliates and individuals. Today is the deadline for the Board of Governors to provide the committee documents and information to shed light on the way Mr. DeJoy was selected for this position. While the Board of Governors might be, quote, tickled pink, unquote, with Mr. DeJoy's performance, the American people are not. Perhaps they need to be reminded that their job is to serve the country, not any particular president. I look forward to hearing from our expert witnesses today and continuing this critical discussion and the committee's ongoing investigation.